Now the Fife Coastal Path is a, as I might have said before, it's a long distance, a long distance path. I sometimes think of it as the, the path between the two bridges, between the, the fourth bridge just outside Edinburgh and, uh, or at Queen's Ferry rather, and uh, the Tay Bridge at Dundee, but it's actually a little bit further than that. And it would take you quite a few days to complete it all. But you're talking here, it's very different to a lot of long distance walking routes that perhaps go into hills or mountains or deep in forests and what have you. The Fife Coastal Path, as the name suggests, uh, hugs the coast. And it hugs the coast in what is probably one of the most beautiful little areas in all of Scotland. Fife Seas Nuke. All these little places that you come upon, well, oh, they'll all have their own small harbour. Some will be more picturesque than others, and, um, yeah, I mean, it's, if it, for me, it's one of the best, one of the best uh, walks in the country, no doubt. As I said, we're, we're going to finish up in Creel, and uh, I, I, Creel has probably got the, the, the prettiest little harbour in Five Sea Snook, and you'll see that when we get there. In the absence of any background waffle from yours truly, feel free to hum. <laughs> oh, well, you can hum anything you want. I'm not entirely sure what I hum there. What is that? <laughs> it sounds very regal. Whatever it is, its name escapes me. Oh, I tell you, there's some strange smells. As well as uh, seaweed back there in Cellar Dyke. There's just... Wow, there's some smells around. I think, it, I think this smell might actually be seaweed as well. Oh my god. It's kind of sulfurous. Just five minutes into the walk and already I'm thinking I need a pee. Which is not good because quite a few people use this and there's really no hiding place. But there's nothing more miserable than needing a pee. If, if I see a big rock on the shore I could maybe hide behind a, a suitably large rock. And if anybody passes by, I could shout out, It's okay, I'm just looking for crabs. Just so there's no doubt, you know. <laughs> We're, uh... Lovely, lovely tree there. Um, okay, we're, we're coming to a... A bit that sticks out a wee bit. I don't think I would go as far as to say it was a promontory, but it's a bit where I can't see what's around the corner. And these are the exciting bits. Because there's nothing better than wondering what's around the corner. Don't you think? Sure as fate, we'll turn the corner and we'll be bustled of folk all having a pee. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sure there won't be. Um, Okay, the excitement mounts here. A corner. You know, there's, there's been much talk throughout history about the benefits of 
being by the sea. You know, folk would arrive in bus load and train load and veritable hordes at seaside destinations to partake of those bracing sea odours. Clearly there was no seaweed around back then. But I used to wonder why that was and I think, realistically, I think it's because these sea breezes blow in off the sea and there's no trees or plants out there. So I think it's just a total lack of pollen and other things that might irritate you. Get up your nose, even. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot to be said for uh, a cadonder by the, the, the coast. There's a bird agreed with me there. We've come around that wee bend and nothing much happened. It was just a wee bend. Well, I've managed to have my pee behind a big rock on the shore. No crabs. I think the older you get, the more importance peeing becomes. And I think it was Billy Connolly that said, when you go over 50, you should never pass up an opportunity to have a pee. <laughs> oh, how true that is. <laughs> We're coming up to another bend here. I love bends. Nice weathered bit of rock there. Weathered by the sea, I would guess. Long, long time ago. I mean, I th from what I understand, sea levels were much higher, you know, thousands of years ago. And uh, I dare say that was probably underwater. At one time when the, the, uh, the shore would have been further up the hill. My God, there's a cave there, look. Oh, there is, there's a cave. There's one thing I like better than corners, and it's caves. Well, let's just see what's in here. Actually, this is maybe the place where everybody has a fly pee. <laughs> that's, maybe, that's maybe what's in here. Uh, oh my goodness, right, okay. Oh, it does actually smell of piss. Right, okay. Oh my goodness. Is this a, is this a den? Caves like this, especially in the area of uh, Wemis, I think there's a few Weemuses east, west, I don't know, there's an, I think the coal town of Weemus even. But in one of those Weemuses there's uh, caves with ancient uh, carvings on them. I don't know if they're Pictish or whatever, but um, yeah, very, uh, very old, but th th those caves are dangerous. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Okay. It's not so much pee it smells of, it smells like, it smells of, um, I don't know if it's sheep, but there's droppings of sheep or cattle or something. Anyway, let's get back out.
there's another wee bit that goes in there, look. Look at that. Watch out for the bear. Oh well, yes. <laughs> Sonny Bean, even. Ah, fascinating, yeah. So that was caves. I didn't. I didn't realise there was caves here. Hello there. I calculated that it'll take about two hours between Anstruther and Crail because it is only five miles but I've been stopping quite a few times and uh, I also dilly dallied in Anstruther I ate a pie yeah, so I'm running a wee bit late could I give a hoot? No you got to make the best of these warm sunny days, we don't get that many of them. Buses and timetables can wait. I'm going to have the time of my life here. Exploring caves and what have you. And wait till you see the harbour at Creel. Oh my god, it's just stunningly beautiful. Okay, everybody stay calm. There's wild animals up there. I don't know what they are. I think they're sheep, but I've never seen sheep like them in all my life. And whatever, I think they must have been responsible for those droppings in the cave. Where do you see this? I've never seen them like it in my life. I mean, you're not going to tell me these are just sheep. They've got white bits on their faces, their wool's brown. Could be ninja sheep. I don't know. We better not hang about. In case they spot us. The thing about herds of animals is they have a certain herd instinct. And they act all nonchalant and you turn away and next minute they're about 50 metres closer to you but still looking nonchalant and chewing grass. And you turn away again and they're even closer. And when it gets to the stage where they're less than 20 metres away and still looking nonchalant, that's when they'll charge. <laughs> oh my goodness, right. Abandoned cottage coming up ahead. It's actually not just an abandoned cottage, there's another building that's also ruinous. Perhaps there was a small steading here at one time or another or, or maybe it's an industrial unit I don't know When I go back home I'll check um, mid 19th century order and survey maps and see what it says I think the thing about abandoned cottages is um, you always wonder if you'll find something that the folk left behind. An old iron cauldron or something. And I'm not sure why, but that, that building there on the left just it does have a slightly industrial feel to it. Unless maybe it was a barn or something, but um, I don't know. I just don't know. 
It'd be a strange place to have a farm, wouldn't it? Right on the, the shore. So it wouldn't be a normal farm. I mean, the, the ground around it's all sloping. So I am inclined to... maybe fishermen's... Um, no, I mean... I'm going to stick with my gut instinct and suggest that that's got an industrial look to it. And it's just instinct, because I've got nothing to base that thought on. And this is definitely some kind of cottage or living accommodation for whoever perhaps did whatever they did in that other building. I mean, if we, if we, obviously when you're on the shore, there, there are certain things that spring to mind, like salt panning and what have you, but salt panning generally happens over big flat areas. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's just something. I'll come into an interesting bit here. A few steps and a bend. I strongly suspect that we're getting fairly near Crail. Oh, there's quite a serious rock fall on the right there. Well, we're going up, we're going up. We're going up there. At some point, Crail will sort of magically pop into view. Unless somebody's stolen it. So this could be the outskirts of uh, Crail. Not entirely sure, to be honest. Hello there. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I get the feeling Crail's just round the corner here. That's the thing about corners, there's generally something good around them. Although not always, because we had a few corners back there where nothing happened. Okay, so we've arrived in Crail and we're just going to follow one of the narrow lanes that will make its way down to the harbour and I highly recommend that you come this way and visit the harbour uh, If we're in Crail, well, you, you simply can't miss it I mean, it's just... Um, I think as I was saying to a couple of other visitors there, I mean, it really just doesn't get better than this. You'll be hard pushed to find a more beautiful place in all of Scotland. So 
So for, we'll go down to the harbour and make our way to the end of the harbour. I always suggest going to the end of harbours if it's safe to do, to do so, because you can often get a slightly different perspective on, on a place. It's not just a heart, the place is festooned, all the, all the little cottages are festooned with flowers. It just, it's just, it's a, it would be hard to imagine anything more beautiful. Look at, look at this. Flowers all over the place. They're getting really strange aromas. It's like a mixture of, um, mixture of, Sea salt and uh, that seagull there is trying to figure out if this camera is something edible. Well, I'm afraid it's not. Well, this is just at the end of the harbour. And that's probably the end of our journey just now. By all means, go up into Crail and explore the place properly because there's a lovely market cross up there. You've got a golf tavern for a beer and lots of other things. And I'm going to repeat myself yet again. But you'd be hard pushed to find a more beautiful place in the whole of Scotland. Yeah, that is from I'm Eddie Burns. Uh, Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you again. <laughs>